don't get as much benefit. Mm -hmm. Can I record this? Yeah, you can record this. Okay. So let's just go through this real quick and, we'll, and she can record it. That's fine with me. So off the arch of the aorta, brachycephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian. Then we're going to go over the branches that come off of the subclavian. So the best way to learn arteries is to kind of chunk them up. You're going to see the subclavian right in here and the branches it's throwing off. First branch is most important. It's the vertebral artery. Vertebral artery is going to head north, entering the transverse foramen of C6. So because it's entering the transverse foramen of C6, the vertebral artery is going to head behind the anterior scalene. It's your landmark, heading north behind the anterior scalene and entering the transverse foramen of C6. Then we have this one heading down on either side of the sternum that you met last quarter in visceral, or a few quarters ago in visceral. And you saw when we pulled off the sternum and had heading on either side of the sternum, underneath the transversus thoracicus, you saw the internal thoracic artery. So internal thoracic artery is coming off the subclavian on each side. The other branch is coming off the back of the subclavian. It's very hard to see. Um, it has to show up in a book because there's no models that show it. But if you pull the subclavian kind of forward, you'll see this branch coming off the back. It's called the costocervical trunk. Costocervical trunk is going to give off your dorsal, dorsal scapular artery, which you met in second quarter, traveling with dorsal scapular nerve going to levator scap and rhomboids. Also, it's going to give off the deep cervical arteries, which you can see in netter. Fourth branch off the subclavian is this one here called the thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk is going to be coming off more anterior and slightly more lateral than the others. Four branches off the thyrocervical trunk. We start with the suprascapular artery, which is going to join the suprascapular nerve, going to supraspinatus and infraspinatus. Then we have the transverse cervical artery, which is going to head off with the Spinal accessory nerve. Remember the transverse cervical artery and nerve do not travel together. Next branch is called the ascending cervical artery. You have a landmark for the ascending cervical artery. It's going to be on top of the anterior scaling. So what nerve is the ascending cervical artery going to be traveling with? The phrenic. Phrenic. Mm -hmm. Very good. So you're going to see the ascending cervical. Ascending cervical may come off the transverse cervical, as you see here, or it may come off the inferior thyroid, but it tends to come off a little bit higher up. So thyrocervical trunk, suprascapular, transverse cervical, ascending cervical, and inferior thyroid. Inferior thyroid actually loops behind the common carotid to get to the back side of the thyroid gland. So you'll see it actually curve around behind there. That's all the branches off subclavian. Questions? So inferior thyroid curves behind the right. Curves behind the common carotid on each side. So it's going to curve around the, behind the right common carotid on this side and behind the left common carotid on that side to get to the thyroid gland. So that's all the branches off the subclavian. Then we're going to follow the carotid arteries. The cool thing about the common carotids is there's no branches that you need to know. Also, there's no branches off the internal carotid that you need to know. There is, however, carotid sinus, which contains what? What does the carotid sinus contain? What carotid is? body. Carotid bodies are going to be right here at the carotid bifurcation. Good. Carotid bodies contain chemoreceptors to measure... PCO2, and, which is indirectly measurement of pH, and then the carotid sinus has baroreceptors for blood pressure, which is why you don't take the pulse bilaterally on the carotids, because the brain registers it as the blood pressure is too high, you have a reflex drop in cardiac output, and then your patient drops. Hmm. So no branches off the common carotid, no branches off the internal carotid. Off the external carotid, we're going to have three branches that come forward. First branch is right after the carotid bifurcation is the superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery is going to come down to the thyroid gland. Superior thyroid artery is going to give off the superior laryngeal artery. Superior laryngeal artery is going to go through the thyrohyoid membrane. Superior laryngeal artery goes through the thyrohyoid membrane with the internal laryngeal nerve. <clears throat> This is one of those where you just have to memorize it. If I'm going through the thyrohyoid membrane and it's an artery, it's the superior laryngeal. If it's a nerve, it's the internal laryngeal. Next branch off the external carotid after the superior thyroid, which gives off the superior laryngeal, is going to be the lingual. Lingual is going to enter above the hyoid bone, kind of paralleling the hypoglossal nerve, because the hypoglossal nerve is coming across right at the carotid bifurcation here. 
and the hypoglossal nerve is also entering above the hyoid bone. Sometimes the facial and lingual arteries will come off together as a facial lingual trunk before branching into the lingual and the facial. Facial is going to cross the mandible here and head up the midline, kind of the middle of the face, giving off branches as it goes. We're going to talk about those branches for the final. So the three branches that go forward, superior thyroid giving off superior laryngeal, lingual, and facial. Facial crosses the mandible, lingual enters above the hyoid. Superior laryngeal goes through the thyrohyoid membrane and superior thyroid is going down to the thyroid gland. And we have three branches that come off the external carotid and go more posterior. First branch is very, very short and very, very small because it's just going about that far until it gets to the pharynx. So it's going back and medial. It's very hard to find. It's called the ascending pharyngeal. Next branch is the occipital artery, which you saw in the posterior triangle of the neck. This is where the occipital artery comes off. You're going to find the occipital artery traveling deep or medial to the mastoid. So it's going to go medial to the mastoid. So you're going to see it traveling almost between the posterior digastric and the stylohyoid. So it's going to travel right along the mandible, going to go medial to the mastoid, and then pop out behind the mastoid to get to the back of the head. Posterior auricular is going to come off a little bit higher up, and it's going to go just behind the ear. Posterior auricular. So the three branches that come off the external carotid and go back are called ascending pharyngeal, occipital, and posterior auricular. Finally, the external carotid is going to branch into the maxillary artery, which is going to enter the maxilla and give off a whole bunch of branches that you need to know for the final. And the superficial temporal. Superficial temporal is going to head up right in front of the ear on top of the temporalis muscle. And the superficial temporal is going to give off a small branch that crosses the zygomatic arch called the transverse facial. That's all the arteries in the neck you need to know. Maxillary artery is here, and all you need to know about the maxillary arteries is the terminal branch of the external carotid. So external carotid ends where it branches into maxillary and superficial temporal. And then uh, all the branches off the maxillary we're going to go over for the final exam. Questions? Good? Helpful? Yeah, and if, if you want, I can like go over the drawings, and you can record me going over the drawings, if that would help. Okay.